There are moments that try the human soul so violently and so perplexing that if the truth were told, all of us have had moments that we wanted to throw up our hands and walk away. Particularly painful is discouragement in the life of the believer because as we travel from season to season, it is not just the perils that we face, but it is seeing the wicked go forward while the righteous are held back. Discouragement can creep in secretly, hide behind clothes, makeup, hairdos. Discouragement is so bold that it will even hide behind a smile. It will always ride to work with you. And if it doesn't catch a ride going to work, it'll catch a ride on the way back home. Discouragement will go into a tent. It will walk right into a Section 8 neighborhood. But don't think that it stops. Discouragement will walk right into a middle-class house. It won't just stop there. It'll go in a mansion and sit on the side of a jacuzzi and tell you life is not worth living. If you listen at discouragement, it will cause you to make bad decisions. It will cause you to think that life is not worth living. And secretly behind the facade of a smile and a good morning and a praise the Lord and a how are you, you will wonder if you're ever going to get out of what you're into. One of the things that we know about life is that it is always changing. Sometimes you're up, sometimes you're down. Sometimes you're happy and sometimes you're sad. Now that's that thing called life. And when we begin to understand and know that, accepting that reality that we will never ever have things just on an even kill all the time, that you're gonna have some ups and you're gonna have some downs. But during those down moments, that's where the growth takes place. That's where the work is. Anybody can feel good when they have their health, their bills are paid, they have happy relationships, the children are acting normal, business is successful. Anybody can be positive then. Anybody can have faith under those kinds of circumstances. See, but the real challenge, the real challenge of growth, mentally, emotionally, and spiritually, comes when you get knocked down. Adversity introduces a man to himself or a woman. How you handle it, that's where the growth takes place. The biggest poison in us is regret. Bad decisions, hasty decisions, too fast, and affects the next 20 years of your life because you made the wrong decision. What makes us make these fast decisions? Fear? Let the fear of regret fuel you to take action today, now. Hurt people will go above and beyond to hurt people. Insecure people will go out of their way to create insecurities. Dysfunctional people will take a peaceful, happy, and beautiful situation and figure out a way to create dysfunction where there is none. What we should do when somebody does us wrong, forgive them and let it drop. Leave it and let it go. Be the best. Lifelong personal development requires tremendous dedication, discipline, and willpower. It is often the case that we know what we need to do, but we lack the courage to take the risks. Instead, we make excuses for inaction. When people can walk away from you, let them walk. When people can walk away from you, let them walk. The great thing about excuses is that no matter what happens, excuses are always there waiting to be used. But the downside of excuses is that nobody really believes them. If you make excuses, they're going to know it and they're going to think less of you. But if you refuse to rely on excuses, people are going to know that too and they'll admire you for it. Maybe somebody's talking about you, trying to make you look bad. 
You could easily be upset, offended, try to pay them back. Why don't you try a different approach? Drop it, leave it, and let it go. You need large amounts of self-discipline to deal courageously with all the fear-inducing events of your life. Courage is rightly considered the foremost of the virtues, for upon it all others depend. Often, fear is necessary to preserve life, prevent injury, and guard against financial mistakes. I don't want you to try to talk another person into staying with you, loving you, calling you, caring about you, coming to see you, staying attached to you. I mean, hang up the phone. When people can walk away from you, let them walk. If you ask people what they regret, especially as they get older, what they generally report is things not done. So they don't regret so much mistakes they've made, although, of course, people obviously regret mistakes they've made as well. So they don't exactly regret sins of commission, right, errors that they've actively made. They torment themselves for opportunities that had presented themselves that they did not, let's say, exploit or engage in. The regret we feel for things that we've done, though intense, only lasts a short period of time. But the regret that we feel for things that we missed out on, that can extend throughout a lifetime. Because most of us are scared, and we choose to lead an easy life. And by doing so, we start to rack up those regrets. But there is a solution. You have to be willing to be bold. You have a great life in front of you, but your great life is in front of you. It's not behind you. What you did back there ain't got nothing to do with what God got for you. What you did back there was learn the lessons to get you to where you are at this particular moment right here. Bad decisions, hasty decisions, too fast, and affects the next 20 years of your life because you made the wrong decision. If you'd have just waited, got all your information together, settled yourself, you'd have been better. What makes us make these fast decisions? Fear? It takes discipline to face your fears so you can conquer them. And that's what discipline is. Discipline means taking the hard road, the uphill road to do what's right and regret. In and of itself, it's worthless. So learn and move on. The ability to learn to say no and not to feel guilty about it, to me, is about the greatest success I have achieved. It's all a part of a process for growing for me. To me, to have the, in, the kind of internal strength and internal courage it takes to say, no, I will not let you treat me this way, is what success is all about. I will not be treated this way. I demand only the best for myself. As you might imagine, I don't think we should spend a lot of time regretting the choices we've made in the past. To spend time brooding over how things went, that's an illusion. What you're doing is suffering pointlessly in the present under the shadow of certain memories. You're telling yourself a story about something that might have been over and over again. How long do you want to do that for? And sometimes life is going to knock you down. But because you have been knocked down, don't mean that you finish. No, you got some reasons. It might be your own sense of, of pride and determination and the kind of life that you want to create. There are people in their 30s and 40s who are still acting like adolescents. And there are even people in their 40s and 50s who are still acting like babies as far as their attitude toward responsibility is concerned. But the large number of people who shirk responsibility can also provide opportunities for you if you are determined to be different. If you decide to be one of the few who embraces responsibility, you can lead and you will deserve to lead. Churchill said responsibility is the price of greatness. And in my opinion, it's really a rather small price to pay. It means, first of all, that you accept the consequences of your actions. Responsibility means you look to yourself as the source of everything that happens to you. It means that you assume command, regardless of the hardships you may have undergone early in life, or the dozens of people who may have failed to understand you. I'm saying that regardless of the presence of those negative influences in your life, the best thing you can do, the strongest thing, the most empowering thing, and ultimately the wisest thing, is to accept responsibility for your own destiny, plain and simple. 
If you have enough reasons, you can do the most incredible things. Here's what you might be lacking, a long enough list of reasons. Reasons that drive you, reasons that get you up a little extra early, reasons that keep you up a little extra late. That's what makes the difference. You should always make decisions with your heart and soul. You can use your brain for math, but when it comes to the actual feel of the decision, you always want to go inward and check it against your heart and soul. Here's the simple test. Does the decision that you're about to make expand you, expand your future, or expand the possibilities of your life? If the answer is yes, then the decision is yes, no matter how terrifying it is. Other than death, all failure is psychological. Other than death, all failure is psychological. Does not mean that you won't lose some battles, because you will, we all will. But it does mean that as long as you don't surrender, as long as you don't quit, then you haven't failed. Here are some action exercises that you can do. Make a decision today to invest in yourself and getting better, as if your future depends on it, because it does. Identify the most important skills you have that determine the quality and quantity of results you get at your work and make a plan to get better in each one. Set excellent performance in your work as a goal and then determine exactly what you will need to do every day to join the top 20% or better in your field. I fought a good fight. I fought for my kids and I fought for what was right and I fought for my good health and I fought for a good career that would bless my family. I fought a good fight, the encroachment. Opposites are in conflict and we're in the middle. And if you want something valuable, you got to fight for it. You have comeback power. When something happens to you, don't buy into what has happened to you. Buy into, I'm getting up out of here. I'm going to change this situation. This does not work for me. And I don't have the luxury of being depressed. I need to clear my head. Yes, we can see avoidance of responsibility all the time in both our personal and professional lives. We can see that most people aren't as successful as they wish they were. Do you see there's a connection between these two very common phenomena? I hope you'll understand that it's in your best interests to take responsibility for everything you do. But that's only the beginning. I'm also going to suggest that many times it's even best to accept responsibility for the mistakes of others, especially when you're in a managerial or leadership role. What do you do when you tried and failed and you want to quit and you want to give up? Sometimes you can be blessed and be unhappy because even though things are going right they're not going according to what you had believed and expected and you know that something is missing out of your life you got to clear your head so that the decision that you make represents the best in you be still and know that you're going to get through this you're going to get through this you got to assure yourself you have to encourage yourself you have to clear your mind. The great thing about excuses, and the really dangerous thing about them, is that no matter what happens, excuses are always there waiting to be used. But the downside of excuses, even good ones, is that nobody really believes them. If you make excuses, they're going to know it, and they're going to think less of you. But if you refuse to rely on excuses, People are going to know that too, and they'll admire you for it. This is especially true in business. One of the classic examples happened about 15 years ago. A widely advertised healthcare product from a leading manufacturer was shown to be unsafe, and the company responded by pulling every single box off the shelves at a cost of millions of dollars. Was the company destroyed? Hardly. If they had done anything else, there would have been a tremendous loss of confidence. Instead, there was honest acceptance of responsibility for a mistake. Contrast this with what happened recently to a leading manufacturer of computer chips. When a new microprocessor didn't perform up to expectations, the company made excuses. It was a minor problem. 
something that would crop up once in a lifetime, and so forth. Were these excuses valid? Maybe. Maybe not. But it doesn't really matter, does it? So many people use excuses, but nobody really buys them. Weeping may endure for a night, but joy comes in the morning. Your story doesn't end in the night. The night is temporary. Don't get discouraged. It's just a night season. It's not permanent. It's not how your story ends. You may not see anything happening. Keep moving forward in faith. Keep believing. It's just a matter of time before the morning breaks forth. That accepting responsibility is one of the highest forms of human maturity. To put yourself on the line, a willingness to be accountable is really the defining characteristic of adulthood. Anyone who has raised children knows how true this is. Just look at a baby during the first few years of life. Every facial expression, every tentative word has one message for the baby's parents. I am totally dependent on you. I can't be held responsible for the consequences. I can't do anything for myself even if I try. After all, I'm just a baby. Ten or twelve years later, of course, as the boy or girl enters adolescence, this message to the parents will be very different. It will sound something like this. I want to be totally independent. Why don't you just leave me alone? I don't want to do anything but think about myself. I certainly don't want to accept any responsibility. It's only when we're at last grown up that the first two messages, I'm totally independent of you and I'm totally dependent on you, finally turn into, you can depend on me which is the truly adult outlook. The night seasons are not the end. The bad breaks, the disappointments, that's simply another step on the way to your destiny. But let me tell you what ought to cause great joy to come to your life is if you'd stop comparing yourself to other people and you would just remember where you came from and remember where you started. You're doing more. You're seeing more. You're achieving more. But if you start comparing yourself with someone else, you can get discouraged because they're doing more maybe than you're doing. Sooner or later, all of us face situations in which we must decide whether to accept responsibility for a problem or look for ways to avoid responsibility. Let's look at the various options and decisions that are now open to you. First, there's the role played by intention. In other words, was the outcome of your action what you intended it to be? And if it was not, should you still accept responsibility for that outcome? This is a very serious issue in the way we think about responsibility. In many areas of criminal law, for instance, the intention to commit a crime must be present in order for the accused to be held criminally responsible. This intention is something quite different from mere negligence. But we don't have to enter a courtroom to see the important role intention plays in accepting responsibility ourselves or assigning it to others. Don't you remember when you were a kid and you left the screen door open so that the cat ran outside and was lost all afternoon? What did you say to avoid responsibility? You said, it was an accident. You said, I didn't mean to do that. As I pointed out earlier, there are lots of people who still use these childlike rationalizations well into their middle age. But if and when you decide you want to be an adult, you begin to see the whole question of intention as nothing more than another opportunity for excuse making, and you should refuse to participate in it. If you get beat, unless you're dead, you are not defeated, and you have not Credit failed. goes to what our awesome patrons learned. who make you've videos like this one possible. And you're still Consider alive. joining them so to support our and work. Go get after it. You can also support us by subscribing to our channel and clicking the bell button to get notified when our new videos are released. And as always, thank you for watching. And I came to speak to somebody today who, who has some triumph in your life, but you've also got some trouble. 
you, you've got some joy in your life, but you've also got some sadness. Until you have had the taste of finishing, you will not respect yourself. Until you follow through, until something is done, come hell or high water, tears and struggles and pain, and you go through it anyway, and you show up, and you continue to fight on, no matter the circumstances. Courage is the key. Courage is the key. Confidence, that is never the promise of God that is in question. It is our confidence in that promise. So why not reach down inside of you and come up with some more of those remarkable human gifts? They're there waiting to be discovered and employed. And I challenge you to do that because you can change. If you don't like how it is for you, change it. If it isn't enough, change it. If it doesn't suit you, change it. And I challenge you to do all that because you can change. See, you don't ever have to be the same after today, only by choice. Now for the process of change, just a philosophical pronouncement won't do. It takes more than that, and it takes more than enthusiasm. You can get all excited about lifting 200 pounds until you get to the gym. Then you need a new excitement, and the new excitement is discipline. Discipline, the major step to human progress. If there is one thing to get excited about, this is it. Get excited about your ability to make yourself do the necessary things to get a desired result. That's true excitement. So remember, if you find yourself doing something that doesn't seem to be supporting you in the long term, remember at some level your brain thinks it's supporting you, at least in the short term. Don't feel bad about it. Don't go, oh gosh, here I am, this failure. Some of the most successful people that I've interviewed and worked with have had self-sabotage. It's just a pattern we once in a while get, and you can just change it now. It's very easy. You can free yourself from self-sabotage right now by knowing from this day forward that if you ever start to sabotage yourself, one, try another approach. Maybe it's you're just not paying attention. Maybe you're not focusing. Maybe you just got some poor habits. For just bad habits, refocus and decide what you do want to accomplish. Really making personal changes calls for 10% inspiration and 90% perspiration. Wishing we could change is a beginning, but now wish must be translated into activity, and inspiration and affirmation must lead to discipline. We can affirm that we are going to change, but we must now form new habits and develop new disciplines for the affirmation to come true. We can look at developing ourselves spiritually, physically, and mentally. With respect to our spiritual development, this may be a major or a minor issue for you depending on your values and your goals. Come to your own decisions as to what it will take to nourish your spiritual nature. Next, let's look at physical development. The body and the mind work together and depend on each other, so they both need attention. Treat your body like a temple. So just put it in your notes, body like temple. Not a bad suggestion. Now, in taking care of the physical, we must learn to be conscious of ourselves, but not self-conscious. We need to be aware of our physical appearance, our physical well-being, but not to the point of being self-conscious. But some people devote too much of their day to physical appearance. Physical appearance is going to have something to do with your future, your well-being, so do spend some time on physical appearance. How we appear to other people does make a difference in terms of our acceptance and our ability to function and do well in the marketplace. If you do have a pattern, realize that any pattern you have, including self-sabotage, still comes back to one thing. Human beings, no matter what we're doing, including sabotaging ourselves, we do it for a positive intent. If it clearly is a pattern where you are subconsciously sabotaging yourself, screwing things up, hey, get excited. Don't get upset. Say, hey, look, my brain is doing what it does best. Personal development, how important. Remember, the major key to your better future is you. That's a sentence with a lot of value. The major key to your better future is you. For a share of my life, I didn't understand the importance of that phrase. I used to wonder why two people could work for the same company and one make twice as much money. Wouldn't that be a puzzle? I know there are many ways to do well, but in this narrow area called compensation, what is the difference? I thought time makes some of the difference. Some people do better because they have more time. 
Now that's got to be dumb, right? You can't get someone else's time. There isn't any more time. Where would you find any? Hey, when the clock strikes 12 midnight, that's about it. It's over. There isn't any more time. If you insist on finding more than 24 hours a day, they will come and take you away. Identify a behavior that's keeping you from getting your goals, something that's stopping you or holding you back. Once you've identified it, ask yourself, what is the positive intent here? What is my brain trying to give me? Get some leverage on yourself so that you can make the change. Teach your brain that, hey, if I don't change this thing, you gotta have a little conversation in your head. You see, what you become is far more important than what you get. However, it is also true that what you become directly influences what you get. Most of what we have, we have attracted by the person we have become. So here's the great challenge of life. You can have more than you've got because you can become more than you are. That is the great focus of attention for life change. Now on the other side of the coin it reads, unless you change how you are, you'll always have what you've got. I've discovered that income does not usually exceed personal development. Sometimes income takes a lucky jump, but unless you keep growing out where it is, it will usually come back where you are. Life has strange ways. A very rich man once said, if you took all the money in the world and divided it equally among everybody, it would soon all be back in the same pockets. I guess it is hard to keep what you haven't attracted by your own personal development. It's not what we can do that's in question. What we can do is fantastic. What we can do is unbelievable. What we can do, it's what we settle for that's disappointing. What we become is what leads to all the good things. And the habits we form, habits of mind, attitude, and behavior, are a dominant part of what we are becoming. Now, I understand, as well as anyone, that forming new habits doesn't come easy. But new habits will come when we change. But rather by changing small pieces and parts at a time. I think that's how most of us change. We just keep nudging ourselves in the right direction, forming one or two new habits at a time, little by little, until finally we've made the turn. And this is where the good life comes from, those personal changes. There's nothing you can do with the seasons, but there's everything you can do with yourself. Wish for your own attitudes, strength, and capabilities to change in order to handle the winters time we will probably use them all unless somebody finally comes along and blows all those excuses apart to make us come face to face with the real reasons for our current dilemma until that time we will probably use another million excuses to prevent ourselves from having a million dollars here's one of the major questions i'll pose to you during this program what are you going to do starting today that will make a difference in how your life works out. See, if you don't do something starting today that will make a difference, guess what? It's going to be the same. And you can guess what the next five years are going to be like. Just look at the last five. Now here's another key question. What can you do starting today that will make a difference? That's a good question. What can you do? What can you do with economic chaos? What can you do with massive disappointment when it's all gone wrong? What can you do when it won't work, when you've run out of money, when you don't feel well, and it's all gone sour? What can you do? Well, let me give you the broad answer first. Here's what you can do. You can do the most remarkable things, no matter what happens. Hey, people can do incredible things, unbelievable things. A man can do the most amazing things with the most impossible circumstances. A woman can do the most remarkable things, with the most disastrous circumstances. Hey, I found out kids can do remarkable things. That is, if they have remarkable things to do. I also found out if they don't have remarkable things to do, there's no telling what they'll do. For things to change for you, you've got to change, no matter what successes you've already achieved. Otherwise, it isn't going to change for you. I sure hope things will change. That seemed to be my only hope. If it wasn't going to change, I was in serious trouble. Then I found out it wasn't going to change, and I was in serious trouble. Hey, remember, it isn't going to change. Not long ago, I did a seminar for a group of oil company executives during their convention in Honolulu. 
Sitting around this conference table, one of them asked, Mr. Rohn, you know some important people around the world. What do you think the next 10 years are going to be like? I said, gentlemen, I do know the right people. I can tell you. So they all listened very carefully. I said, gentlemen, based on the people I know and from the best of my own experience, I've concluded that in the coming 10 years, it's going to be about like it's always been. Need a little pick-me-up today? Welcome to the new Fresh Motivation app, where you'll find daily motivation, daily quotes, listen to your favorite speeches in the background or with a black screen, so nothing interrupts your motivational moment, where you can create your personal profile, create playlists of your favorite speeches and quotes, add personal notes, and start setting goals. Fresh Motivation, the home of motivation. Get it now for free on Google Play. It's not what you do for a living. It ain't how much you make. It ain't none of that. It's simply how you think. If you change your thought, you change everything. You change your attitude, you change your altitude. It's all that. It's the law of attraction. Your attitude is everything. That's what it, money ain't everything, but it's very helpful. It ain't everything, but it's, it's a lot. A seed is a tree, but it must become the tree. And that's the way you are right now. You are a great woman, an awesome man, but you must become. It is my passion, my, my hope, my anger that no human being die until they are manifested. Let's meet you before you go. Let the world see who you really are before you leave us. Show us yourself. Show yourself. What is your ultimate destiny and your goals? God will never give you something somebody else is supposed to have. So all while you're consumed and focused on somebody else's career, how much they got in their account, their moves, their blessings, and their opportunities, your own career, your own focus, your own path is being further dumped in the back seat. God didn't bring you in this world to be focused on what everybody else is doing. How we feel plays such a major part in our future. First, it's what we know so we can make wise decisions about danger and opportunity. But second is how we feel. First, it's how you feel about the past. You need a healthy attitude about the past so that you use it, not live in it, but use it. Not carry it like a burden. But let the wise lessons you learn from the past now serve as fuel to furnish the future. Next, a good attitude about the future. You gotta set your goals. We look back for experience, but we look forward for inspiration. We must be instructed and inspired. No better inspiration than to set your goals. I started this process when I was 25. Literally rocked my world, changed my life. I had no idea it was so simple. Here's how simple it is. Decide what you want, write it all down. Make a list of the people you want to meet. Make a list of the books you want to read. Make a list of the classes you want to take. Make a list of the skills you want to learn. Make a list of the cities you want to visit. Make a list of the investments you want to make. Just make these lists. Here's the next key now. Start checking them off. Put a lot of little things on your, some list so you can start checking off something right away. That's part of the fun. Here's what's next. If you check off something major, celebrate. Because that inspires you to make a longer list of goals. And put everything on your list. Little things insignificant to someone else important to you. I put a little revenge on my first list. My mentor said it was healthy. Some of the people who said I couldn't succeed, kid from the farms of Idaho, they went on my list. Couldn't wait to get my new car, drive it up on their lawn. Say, oh, pardon me, here's the money to have it fixed. This little satisfaction. You have a choice. Your mind has to listen to you. Part of your will is to bring your mind into order. 
Now the reason why most people are ineffective in life and actually fail at life is because they've never learned how to fight the battle of the mind. Happiness is both a grasp of the obvious as well as an awe of the mysterious. But for most people around us, happiness seems to be either something left behind or something yet to be discovered. Like all the good things in life, happiness is elusive by nature, but not impossible to capture. If there is a magic word that stands out above all the rest, this is the one, discipline. A lack of self-discipline is a lack of knowing what you want in life. And when you don't know what you want, you won't have any self-discipline power to get there. Self-discipline makes consistency possible and consistency compounds. It always has and it always will. In difficult times, it's tempting to get sour. Joel, I was doing the right thing and had this bad break. This setback came out of nowhere. Put your foot down and say, I refuse to go through life with a bad attitude. I am not going to let what happened to me, who did me wrong, what I didn't get, keep me from becoming all I was created to be. But too often, we're holding on to the hurts, disappointments, the things we don't understand. That poisons our attitude. You have to let it go. This is a new day. There are a lot of people that don't understand the power of laughter and the power of being joyful and deliberately feeling good. Does it mean that I don't have any challenges? Yes, I do. Stuff's happened to people that I care about. We're so tempted to run somebody else's race. We're so tempted to do it like somebody else did it, but you don't get grace for somebody else's calling. The older I get, the more and more I am convinced that people are borderline obsessed with what's next. And don't get me wrong, I think it's important that you have a vision for your life, and I think it's important that you have an idea of where you're headed, but if you're not careful, you'll get so obsessed with what's next that you'll miss out on what is right now. It doesn't take a lot of us to realize, like, if you're graduating from high school right now, everyone's going, where are you going to college? If you're in college, everyone's like, where are you going to work? I'm like, when are you going to shut up? <laughs> Set your goals, decide what you want, write it down, start checking them off, it's powerful stuff. Next, it's how you feel about everybody. If you wanna be a leader, true leader, entrepreneur of the highest order, well-respected, unique in your field, here's number one, how you feel about everybody. And this is philosophical as well. You cannot succeed by yourself. So a unique sense of appreciation of everybody goes with the territory of leadership. It takes everybody for each of us to be successful. One person doesn't make an economy. One person doesn't make a symphony orchestra. It takes everybody. For this gathering today, all of you had to be here to make this gathering. Everybody. If one of you were missing, there wouldn't be this many people here. Everybody to make something work for the office, whatever, the enterprise takes everybody. The gift of America is everybody who came over the last two, 300 years, bringing with them their gifts. No country has become such a depository of the gifts of the world like America has over the last two, 300 years. People coming, bringing their gifts, gift of language, gift of learning, gift of politics, gift of government, gift of medicine, gift of healing, gift of music, gift of the work ethic. All this came in steady streams from all over the world, making us unusual because of the gifts that were born. And to understand that and appreciate it now gives you open access to the market that's available to make your fortune. Now what I love to do is go back where these gifts came from. Not long ago, I was in Rome, had a thousand people in my class. Someone suggested, Jim Rohn loves the music of Andrea Bocelli, the blind opera singer from Italy. So when they introduced me, 
I walked to the podium and all 1,000 of these Italians stood up and sang for me one of Andrea Bocelli's songs. In true Italian style. I described it to my uh, grandchildren later. I said, here was the scene, a choir of a thousand and an audience of one. And that was me. I thought, here's where some of these gifts came. The gift of poetry. Gifts. So I learned to appreciate the gifts. Now the last attitude is how you feel about yourself. Nothing more powerful than self-esteem which creates self-confidence. The greatest steps towards success come from self-confidence, and that comes from self-esteem, doing what you know you should, so that at the end of the day, you have high, high self-esteem. We have to take control of our thoughts. We have to scratch the negative ones when they come in and replace them with great ones. Now, I don't believe self-talk works all the time, but I believe saying, I am strong, I am good, I intend, I'm a good man, my intentions are pure, I make a difference in the world, I'm kind, I'm gentle, I'm generous. Beginning to repeat these thoughts to myself and these words do generate self-confidence. I keep the promises I make to myself. I'm a man of my word. Many of us choose an active living death. Many of us are walking dead, that we're not doing what we want to do. Many of us stay in relationships where we're dying together, rather than growing and expanding and living together. We're miserable, but because we don't have the courage to see ourselves beyond that relationship that has turned toxic, we go through life living dead people. I know it's easy to get glued to the internet, glued to social media, get glued to the, the TV, uh, you know. But if you fill your mind with constant images of negative news, and they're just saying the same thing over and over, it's going to deplete your reserves, it's going to raise your stress level. When you decide, I have had enough, a leader is about to be born. Toleration is the graveyard of leaders. And that's why we lack leadership in the 21st century. Everybody wants to be liked. Nobody wants to shrug the boat. And that's why we're not leaders, because we want everyone to agree with us. Before you're going to have peace, you're going to have to make some decisions about some things. And the first decision you have to make is I am unwilling to live without peace. I will not live without peace. You see, I spent way too much of my life in turmoil. And maybe 15 years ago, I made a decision that I was going to have peace and I was going to have joy and I was going to have righteousness. That I was not going to spend the rest of my life feeling guilty every time I made some little minor mistake. I want you to honor both yourself and I want you to honor her and I want you to just keep going. If what you actually need is to pause and to just take a break from school for a little bit so you can take care of yourself, that's very different than quitting. That's giving yourself what you need while being responsible for this dream that you better not give up on. Begin to talk to yourself and think these thoughts. When you combine your brain and your body, you scratch the self-doubt. You lose those four stupid beliefs. I am my accomplishments. I am my possessions. I am what other people say I am or I am what I look like. These are completely flawed beliefs. We scratch those. We scratch them. We understand the process of stacking self-confidence in our life. We know we are the content of our character. It's not that easy as dropping out of law school. You've always wanted this. You've always worked for this. You've dreamt about this forever. And it's not going to leave you. That's why we say your dreams are kind of in the back of your mind. So you don't have a choice about this. So you got to take care of the fact that you're grieving and that's like riding waves of emotion. I'm more creative today than I would have been if I'd have had those files. I, I test more than I would have been because what? That, that was a crutch to me. I was holding on to what I knew instead of letting go so I could grab hold of what I could become. So that's a huge word right now. Just be, be testing. It's going to make you the person you need to be during this time. You know, testing says that there's a better way and failing says, I haven't found that way. Failing tells you that, you know, I haven't found that way, but it also tells you getting closer to find that way.
credit goes to our awesome patrons who make videos like this one possible. Consider joining them to support our work. You can also support us by subscribing to our channel and clicking the bell button to get notified when our new videos are released. And as always, thank you for watching.